Hello and welcome to this presentation of reverse and forward engineering with Teradata using CA Irwin Data Modeler. CA Irwin Data Modeler provides users the ability to reverse engineer an existing database or script file and create a graphical model that can then be used to visualize the objects and relationships in the database. Drilling into the model, users will be able to discover all of the properties these objects have and share this information with other stakeholders through reporting or sharing the model. When a data model has been created, either from reverse engineering, from scratch, or by using one of the industry models available, these models may then be edited. These changes in the form of alter scripts, or even a full database schema may be generated using CA Irwin Data Modeler. Let's close this model and begin the reverse engineer process. By clicking Actions and Reverse Engineer, the new model dialog is then opened. We first determine whether we want a physical only or a logical physical model. After making our selection, we choose the target server or database that we want to work with. In this case, Teradata. We then pick the version of Teradata that we want to work with. If you have created templates that have reusable objects such as naming standards or themes or commonly used objects, you can now select that at this time. When we click Next, we get the second page or the Reverse Engineer Set Options page. At this point, we determine whether we're going to reverse engineer from a database or from a script file. If you choose Database, in the next page you will get the Connection screen that gives you information on how to connect to the database you're going to reverse engineer. In this case, we're going to use a script file. By selecting script file, I then browse out and find the file that I'm interested in reverse engineering. In the Items to Reverse Engineer section, there are default option sets created for you. If you'd like to edit these to either filter some things out or pull additional information in, you can edit these and then do a Save As. Save this as an XML file, which you can then reuse in another reverse engineer or provide to other users for their use. On the right hand side, if you need to infer primary keys or relations, you certainly may do so. We'll skip that for this point. By clicking Next, the script file is found and read and a model is created and laid out for us. We can now begin to, to look at all the properties for these tables or relationships. If I'd like to lay this out a little differently, I can simply select Control A to select all objects and then hit the Auto Layout feature. There are five auto layouts for you to choose from. When you find the one that you're interested in and finish laying it out, we can fit the model on the screen. Now we have the zoom in and zoom out buttons that we can use to move around. If you would like to see a little bit more information on screen, you right click, select properties, and then choose the information that you'd like. In this case, we'll choose data types. And we'll lay this out again just to separate the tables. Now you can go into each table or property by simply right clicking and selecting the appropriate editor. In this case, table properties. You can browse through the properties here of all the tables and you can certainly filter to see only certain tables by typing in a few letters of that table. If we right click again and select column properties, we now can look at the properties of all the various columns. In this case we can see domains, here we see data types, constraints. As you're building your data dictionary, you can add comments to any of these objects in the Comment tab. There's also a Where Use tab that allows you to see where something is in use throughout the entire model. By right-clicking again, we see some of the other editors that are available to us, in this case for Teradata. In addition, if you click the model and then 
target Teradata, you'll see that there are other editors that you can work with as well, either to change or to just view the current properties. If we'd like to make a few edits here and then look at those changes and help us generate alter scripts, by going to the Model Explorer, we can see everything in the model laid out alphabetically. By selecting Tables and expanding it, selecting the Employee table and right-clicking, we can bring that table right into our workspace and begin to work with it. In this case, we'll go ahead and make a few changes here. For Employee Number, we've decided we need to lengthen that. So we'll go ahead and make this, change it from 20 to 25. After examining it a little bit further, we see that we don't have an employee last name here, so we should add that. So we'll add a new column called employee L name and accept the default data type. At this point, we can generate alter scripts from these changes we made, or if we'd like to see what the impact is back to the database or the script file, we can go back and do that as well. If you look in the action log, you can see all of the changes you've done so far. This keeps track of everything you're doing throughout your session, and we can see the details in here. Now, the complete compare that we use to create an alter script and see impact analysis can be started by simply clicking Actions and Complete Compare. When you start Complete Compare, you'll notice that it asks you for the right model. You're going to see a side-by-side -side comparison, a left model and a right model. By default, Erwin considers the left model the model you're currently working on. So it's asking you what you want to compare it to, a file, a database, or if you're using our MART repository, a file from there. We're going to compare this back to the DDL file. So I select Database Script and click Load. We accept the defaults and re-reverse engineer that same script file. A right model is then created. When I click Compare, we get a left and right comparison. The far left column is the object level, whether it's a table, a column, or an index, or whatever it might be. We only see what's different. The things that are equal are not displayed on the screen. So we can see that employee L name exists in the left model. That's a new column we added. It does not exist in the DDL file. That's what the grid means. We also can see that the employee number change has affected several fields. By using the left-right arrows, we can copy objects from one model to another. For instance, if we want to uh, copy this employee L name over to the database script file, we click the right arrow. They're now equal, so they disappear from the screen, and we get an alter script light generated here. By clicking Preview, I can see the alter script that Erwin has created for me. I can save this, I can print this, I can edit it here, and if I want to generate it, I can do that with the Generate button. If we look back at the columns here and we decide, okay, we want to keep this change from 25 to 20 by clicking the right arrow and copying it over, it now makes it equal and all my differences are off the screen. I go to the Alter script, preview it, and I can see the entire script that Erwin's written to accomplish these changes. Notice that there is a database template, teradata.fet or forward engineering template. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Any of these changes can be undone and you may generate reports at any time on these differences. When we go back to the model, if we make the decision that we want to generate this out as a full database schema instead of just an alter script, we can go into the action section and click forward engineer. You see that there are several options here. One of them is schema. If we select this and click preview, 
we see the full schema for the entire model is generated here. Again, you can save, you can print, you can edit, you can generate it right now. We also see the teradata.fet. If I would like to tweak the way the script is generated, I can go into Forward Engineer and Forward Engineering Templates. You get a message telling you you're about to go into the model editor, and that's OK. We click OK. And now this exposes the Erwin programming language to, uh, to you, and you can see this is for Create Entity. In the lower left are all the macros you have access to. So you may edit these script files to customize them, and you can save this as my custom teradata.fet, and then reuse that. We do provide manuals for the purpose of making those edits and helping you to understand how to do that. But if we have made a change and create a custom template, when we go to generate either an alter script or a schema, we can then browse out and find that custom template and provide the location to other users to use as well. For more information and videos, please visit Irwin.com.